Hello, everybody, and welcome to this live session. So we are going to give you a tour of the new Arduino IDE 2.0. This is a huge project that kept us busy for the, for the past two years so with a full-time team. And believe me, rewriting the IDE from scratch is a, a very ambitious project. Uh, so why did we do it? Uh, so we wanted to implement new features, but for that, we needed to move away from Java, which is uh, getting obsolete, and we wanted to move to a more modern stack. The IDE 2.0 includes some new important features, and we will see them in this presentation, and an overall better coding experience. During this year, we released 12 beta versions, and a few days ago, we finally removed the beta label, announcing the first release candidate. What does it mean? That in a few months from now, this IDE will become the default choice for all the Arduino users. So this is why we need your help, your eyes, your hands, to test it and to spot all the issues uh, before we do the stable release. Uh, but I don't want to steal more time, so let me bring the first guest to the show, Ubi De Feo. Ubi is a creative technologist at Arduino and the product owner of the Arduino tooling team. Hi, Ubi. Uh, hi, Alessandro. Thank you for uh, giving me a bit of stage. Uh, hello, everyone following. I just, you know, I'm just here to show you the work that we've been doing. I know that many have already downloaded the IDE 2.0. We got a massive amount of feedback on GitHub, in the forums, and you know, like many bugs have been resolved thanks to the community. So now it's almost time to give it to everyone and uh, to, to get more stuff. You know, I'm usually the guy that people get angry at when uh, something doesn't work. And I'm very happy to be this a uh, recipient of uh, good feedback and bad feedback because my job is essentially transforming what the community wants into features of this ID. And it's, uh, you know, it's big shoes to fill. Let's, let's just say it. Uh, Ubi, before leaving the stage to you for your presentation of the ID, I want to add just uh, one word. Uh, the ID is open source uh, and it's free for anyone to use even for non-Arduino boards. It's a massive effort we are doing because we believe in open source, we believe in community, and this is also financially possible thanks to all the people who buy original Arduino boards and make donations. Otherwise, this would not be possible. So a big thank you uh, uh, to all of you because you are the people who are making this possible. Uh, remember to write your questions in the chat. We will answer at the end of this presentation, and now will be over to you. Thank you. Uh, all right, so I would like to share my screen uh, in order to show you this product. Uh, as I said, many of you already know this. Uh, people have gotten excited about, you know, the fact that it has some new features. Uh, and I mean, we know the new features that are possible thanks to the backend that we have and uh, more on this later. Francesco is going to tell us more details, but essentially uh, I have an ID which is very lean. It's uh, based on web technologies and it works with every board that is supported by the Arduino framework uh, and infrastructure. Uh, the main changes that we have, we have of course maintained everything that is familiar to the, the vast majority of users. So you can simply just jump from the old ID to the new one, but we have implemented new things. You will see icons on the left, and uh, this is one of my favorite because it allows me to basically see all my sketchbook. As you may see, I have a ton of sketches that I work on, and this is because, you know, my job is making this thing work better, and I've been in Arduino for many years. But I can also use my remote sketchbook, and I can work on sketches that I have on my Arduino Cloud account. So basically, I can work on this computer, but I can go to my laptop and just log in and use the same sketches. And I can retrieve changes and push changes. Uh, this is something major that we have done over the past few months. And uh, we use it. So it's something that we want people to use more and more. Uh, I have a sketch open here. But first, before we get into the coding, I want to show you uh, some other pieces of the interface. Uh, the very famous uh, board manager that we always had um, is, you know, like also as a counterpart in the sidebar. We wanted to make this more modern 
and we have you know we can look for uh, uh, I don't know if I if I have STM32 for instance and I can install new cores like Alessandro was saying every board and platform that is supported by the Arduino ecosystem will work in this ID. Uh, we have a library manager and you know uh, well I was just looking for our IoT cloud library um, and oh my name is here that's funny uh, and essentially I can install more libraries that are available through our library ecosystem which is incredibly big and you can find libraries for everything made by every manufacturer for every possible module that you have there. Uh, we introduced the new search functionality, which basically allows us to search within the sketch. So if I search for long, I can see every instance of long and I can directly jump to it. Uh, or uh, let me see. Anyway, it's, it's very useful if you are looking for code. If your project is larger uh, than, you know, the average project, it, sometimes it can be very hard to find uh, some stuff that you can find. Uh, all right, so let's go to edit this file. Uh, one major improvement to our ID is that now we support language server capabilities. So I can uh, include a library, for instance, to work on uh, uh, I square C devices, I can include a library that does uh, I square C. And it gets, for a moment, you see the, that uh, wiggly uh, underline. That means that the, the IDE is basically calculating what kind of information are available. So making sure that it can fulfill uh, every, every type of operation that is related to that library. So for instance, I can just say, wire dot begin and then i can assign an address to my arduino board uh zero three and then wire and it can fill it can pre-fill the the completion and i can just say you know what uh begin transmission and i'm going to transmit to a device which is at address uh zero x six nine and then I can uh, write to this address so I can send data to my device. And I'm just going to say, you know what, uh, zero, zero, uh, wake up, let's assume. And then I can read from my device. Uh, uh, read, read bytes, and I want to read 10 bytes. So as you've seen, you know, there's a... Uh, squiggly line and then it's going to compute what it need. I think I'm I forgot something here. Uh let me see. Read bytes. Still calculating. Uh, I have another keyboard here so I'm not very comfortable with it. Uh, uh you see at the bottom, it's indexing because every time I write something in here, it's basically recalculating what it might need. So essentially behind the scenes, it's sort of recompiling your file to make sure that it can provide you with uh, with uh, completion. So I want to read 10 bytes. And I'm good. This will read my 10 bytes. And in the meantime, it's going to do some other stuff, building the sketch, recompiling. This sketch is essentially just something that I want to use to demonstrate another feature that we have added to the IDE 2.0, which was missing during the beta, during most time of the beta. And this feature is the serial plotter. Okay, so the serial plotter will start, and this is like an extra application. So my uh, my sketch is set up so that it can receive a command, and when I send this command, it's going to start uh, pushing data to the serial port. And this command is A. And you can see that it's plotting data. I am plotting several variables and it's going pretty fast. I have a, a safe delay of 10 milliseconds, but sometimes I just push data through uh, at maximum speed. And what I can do with this, uh, you can see that there is this pink line, which is time, and it's basically going up every second. 
But what I can do with this uh, new serial plotter compared to the one from the Java ID is that I can decide which uh, variables I want to show. And I can do something even nicer, which is I can pause, essentially. I stop the graph, and then I can go over uh, my data points, and I can see the values. So let me open this normalized noise, which is normalized at 85%. Then I have this slope, which is another random. Then I have the time. And the time when I click it, it shows me that it's uh, 52, right? Anyway, so what I can do, I can interpolate the data. And that is a very simple interpolation algorithm. If I remove the time, I can see it better. And I can still hover. And the moment that I click run, it's going to start running again. And then I can send, while it's doing this, I can send the command back to the board. And I can say, stop sending me data. I don't need it anymore. And then I can do it again. Send me data again. And you see the time is going up. So what I can do, uh, I can just close this. And I can start it again. And when I restart it, the board will be reset, because that's how the Arduino works. And then I can push data again. What's really interesting is that this one connects to a data socket. So I can have the serial monitor throw the same data at the same time, unless you have your Mac connected to a hub and your board is not seen anymore by the system. But essentially, it's uh, very well performing. We are extremely proud of the work that has been done uh, because you can go at much higher speeds. I'm now using an Uno, but we do this with the Portenta as well. Uh, what we think is that with more time spent on this, we, we have quite a lot of ideas. Uh, this can be used like a, like a very basic essential uh, oscilloscope. If you play your cards right, you can have analog data uh, pulled in by your Arduino board and you can measure analog values, you can measure waves. And you can see it's really, really fast because we have rewritten the serial monitor entirely. Uh, and uh, Francesco and Alberto have done some incredible work on that uh, on that part of the ID. And I mean, this is basically what we have been doing for for the past couple of months. We, it took a while, but the the serial plotter is uh, is something that we're really really proud of. And I don't know. I think I've showed you most of the stuff that I wanted to show today. Uh, demo effect included. Oh, we also have something really interesting that we didn't have earlier. I mean, we've released it in the beta, but you can use the Arduino IDE to upload a new firmware to, to your wireless modules. And this one has a backend that essentially always pulls the, the most recent version of a, of a wireless module. So you don't have to wait for a new release of the IDE. We're trying to work towards uh, a point in time in which we have this ID to suggest updates to the users, not just in matter of libraries and boards, but also updates of the ID itself. As we uh, release the stable version, we want users not to have go and check, hey, is there a new version of the Arduino ID? Have they changed something? We're going to try and push uh, new technologies and new features toward the user. And uh, there's uh, just a new dark team coming your way. I'm not going to tell you more than this, but it's going to be nicer. And yeah, that's about for the demo for today. So, Obi, to, to recap, we have seen a new uh, serial plotter with many abilities, selecting data, very fast uh, plotter, and, and, and uh, the, the ability to see the data content in the, at the same time in the plotter and the serial monitor, a number of yeah. other improvements. Then we saw the, the auto-completion and the language sure. server features. Uh, and then shall we also say a couple of words about the debugger and the debugging features we have? Yes, I don't. I don't have a board uh, for debugging we can, here. We can even just mention the, the feature and show it in the interface. Yes, some, I yes. see some people in the comments who are asking for this feature, and this is one of the major new features of the IDE 2.0. Definitely. Uh, when it comes to the debugger, basically, we decided to uh, not to write it from scratch because that would be uh, insane. But we use a very stable. Uh, 
uh, debugger module for uh, uh, it's it's a, a VS Code extension. Thea supports VS Code extensions, and that's also part of the the possibilities that are added to this IDE. Uh, if you you know like are comfortable with that kind of stuff, you can find the ways to introduce new plugins, and it's going to give us some sort of expandability. Uh, the debugger essentially we have uh, we still have. Uh, just a couple of platforms which are supported. It requires some work from the platform developer. Uh, and for now, we have basically we support uh, some D debugging, so uh, ARM debugging. Uh, you can use um, microchip EDBG, you can use JLink, you can use uh, Blackmagic Probe. It's just a matter of configuring some special features. So. Uh, right now, we have an implementation that basically allows every user to override the default uh, debugging uh, functionalities. So parameters like the adapter, like the microcontroller target. Uh, but to implement debugging, so to make it available, you see now I have an Arduino Uno Mini selected, and the debugging feature is not supported by the Uno because we did not implement it, and debugging AVR is pretty... Uh, weird, but we have a user in the on GitHub that essentially found his way around it and is debugging the Arduino Uno with the debug wire interface made with an FTDI adapter. So we we really leave uh, the chance to the user to basically hack their ways into it, and this is what has made our Java IDE extremely popular and uh, flexible. People could just get into the open source code and they could uh, introduce new features. And this is why we have some features such as the, the serial plotter. The serial plotter was not initially in the Arduino ID, but it was added by the community. So it's uh, we want to we wanna try and achieve the same thing. So to answer some of the questions we are getting in the chat, this is not a preview. This is the ID 2.0 that you can download right now. Uh, this is why we need your help, we need your feedback, you need your eyes to spot all possible issues, bugs, uh, whatever you notice, because we, we want to make the study simply perfect. And we also, by the way, we also need positive feedback if everything works properly and you like it. So if you go to the Arduino website and you go to the software page, uh, you scroll down, you will see the future version of the Arduino ID. And from here, you can download the ID we have been presenting during this chat, and uh, then you can try it. Uh, and, and there are a, a few ways to provide feedback. If you uh, go, if you follow the links we are going to post in the chat right now, you will find a link to a form, a very simple form, where we ask some feedback about your experience with the Arduino ID. But then you can also go to the Arduino forum, you will find the link in the in the chat where we can have discussions about ideas. I'm seeing many interesting uh, suggestions in the in the chat. Uh, and if you feel more advanced, uh, you can jump directly into the GitHub repository where the actual development takes place. And from there, you can go into the issues section and participate in the development discussion. And also you can interact with the developers, with the other members of the community, and you can even uh, browse all the open issues to decide to work on one of them. And you can contribute your code directly from GitHub uh, because we, we need your help. This is open source and it's a collaborative project that couldn't go on without you. Um, there is also one more thing we you can contribute, which is the translation side. The ID, the Arduino ID is uh, known to be translated in tens of languages, uh, and uh, you can contribute also there. Uh, if you follow one of the links we are going to post uh, right now, you will uh, go to the Transifex platform uh, where the community can work collaboratively on translations. As, as you see, we are uh, we completed the Portuguese translation and we are almost there with German translation, but we need some help to complete all the strings in the other languages. Uh, so this is one more way to jump uh, in the project and, and contribute. I would invite uh, Francesco from the tooling team, Francesco Stasi, uh, 
to uh, do a presentation about the technical choices uh, inside the, the IDE 2.0 and its architecture. Francesco is the, the, the lead developer of the, of, the, of the team working on the, on the development of the, of the ID 2.0, so he will show us how the ID uh, works internally. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. Hello, everyone. I'm not sure you are able to see my screen yet. Uh, just let me know when you, when you are, are able to. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, I just uh, want to give you a quick uh, overview on the ID2 architecture and that it works uh, under the hood. Uh, it's going to be just one slide, would be super quick. So uh, first of all, the ID2 is a, an Electron application. For those who are not familiar with Electron, it's basically a wrapper that enables web application to run cross-platform cross uh, on Windows, Mac, and, and Linux, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So the uh, IDE2 is based on TIA. This is an amazing open source project that is extensible and uh, customizable. Um, in fact, uh, everything in TIA is an extension. Uh, for example, we have the uh, Monaco editor, as you can see here, uh, which is a text editor that you use to edit your sketch file. Uh, we have the i18n, which is the module that uh, Arduino contributed to uh, that enables the localization in the editor. Um, and we have actually dozen of extension, including uh, one dedicated to uh, run VS Code plugins. And uh, the, yeah, the, the, the one at the bottom of the page. And this is particularly uh, important to us uh, as we decided to provide the language support uh, uh, to InnoFiles files via language server that can be used on both VS Code and obviously the, the ID2. Um, yeah, but um, another example is the Cortex debugger, which is another uh, VS Code plugin we, which we use to um, place breakpoint in the in the code. But uh, yeah, back to the art of the Arduino editor, there is a special extension um, which is called the Arduino extension. Uh, not, not much of a fantasy here, um, and it basically empowers Tia, adding uh, all, all the Arduino features that we need, uh, as well as our iconic uh, look and feel. Um, the Arduino extension, uh, uh, extension basically provides everything uh, that the uh, end user needs to, to work with the uh, Inno files, um, and we do it uh, in a way of uh, uh, providing modules that we also call contribution point. For example, the sketchbook is a big contribution point, uh, the library and the core uh, manager, the serial plotter, the firmware uploader, and many other actually, uh, like the compile and upload. Um, but how we do this? Uh, well, basically, uh, every one of these modules, or let's say the vast majority, uh, as two parts, uh, a front-end part, uh, which is written in React.js, which is responsible for customizing the view, uh, displaying special widgets, uh, uh, creating panels uh, like uh, the dedicated uh, serial monitor panel that uh, we will, uh, will show you in a moment, hopefully. Um, and there is also a back-end, which is written in uh, Node.js and uh, TypeScript, uh, which is used to manage the uh, ID2 internal state, but more importantly, uh, to talk with the CLI. And the CLI, which is uh, actually outside of the uh, perimeter of the ID2, it is very important because um, it it holds the uh, the whole logic to communicate with the with the board, and it it is decoupled from the uh, ID2 application. Um, Backend of the ID2 and the CLI communicates over gRPC, but I don't want to go uh, too much into the details. Um, the, the good thing is that you can actually start using the CLI even after you uh, you are familiar with the ID2, and this is probably one thing that the most advanced users are interested into. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it for the um, architecture overview. Um, Obviously, you can find way more details in our public repositories on, on GitHub. Um, those are the uh, the main ones, the IDE and the CLI. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it from my side. I will uh, uh, turn it over to, to Alessandro. And uh, yeah, let me let me know if there are questions about it. 
So thank you, thank you, Francesco. Quite, quite a technical uh, presentation, but I think uh, that many people were able to to, to follow to follow you. And uh, so, if you have more technical questions, uh, keep in mind that the Arduino IDE 2.0 is based on web technologies, as, as Francesco explained. So it's much more e it's much easier to contribute to its development uh, compared to the previous java id so you can you can jump into the development with us uh, uh, contributing your changes your improvements to the ui to the functionalities uh, and also the modular architecture that francesco just explained uh, will allow anyone to create a sort of modular extensions like plugins like additional features that uh, will enrich the experience of the ID 2.0. This was previously not possible with the Java ID. So this is an example of how we are improving the uh, the capabilities of the ID. Now, I think we can now uh, invite Francesco to join us again and start uh, answering some of the questions we got uh, in the chat. So Ubi, this this is for you. Do I need to reinstall my libraries or can I link them from the previous version? Because I have a lot of them. Okay, that's uh, that's a really interesting question. Uh, thank you. So essentially, no, you don't have to do uh, anything. The only thing, if you have a custom, uh, if you have chosen to have a custom path for your uh, uh, sketchbook, which is where the libraries reside. So there is sketchbook and the libraries folder inside then you will need to just open the preferences in the new IDE and say, this is my sketchbook. And from that moment on, all the libraries that you have uh, before installing IDE 2.0 are going to be there available for you. OK, so will there be a Linux version? Uh, well, uh, it's, <laughs> it's there. You can already download it. We, we made it. Uh, we use it. Uh, most of our team members are uh, Linux users, and it's actively developed on Linux. So just go ahead and download it. And tell us if it works on your distro and yeah. how it works like. So and one more question. Can you clone sketches from GitHub? Uh, that is something that I do all the time. So if in your sketchbook you enter one of your sketches uh, main folder, and you do git init, and then you add the remote, you work remotely on your uh, single sketch. But many users uh, have the whole sketchbook be a git repo. So you can just say, go into your sketchbook folder, git init, and from that moment on, if you are talking about git, you know how to use it, and it doesn't change. You can have your sketchbook on a on a remote uh, server, if you know how to do it, how to map it, or you can have it on uh, iCloud. I mean, uh, some people inside Arduino have it on iCloud, but for instance, you know, like I have some of my sketches on the Arduino Cloud uh, platform, so I can work on my Arduino IoT Cloud sketches uh, from every computer. So, I mean, so, it's so really your so, choice. So there is no conflict between the IDE and the command line Git client. The IDE does not provide a Git interface, but you can no. use your command line tool. And by the way, the new IDE, if I'm not wrong, refreshes the editor automatically, unlike the previous IDE. So it's much yes. more convenient to work on the command line because you will see the changes reflected. And that's why, and that's how Dropbox broke my sketch. <laughs> So. Uh, one more question. I don't know if it's for, for you, Ubi, or Francesco as well. Uh, can you manually set the axis scale on the serial plotter rather than auto scale? Uh, I, I can answer that. Uh, not yet. So okay, we but, are planning but, but this on... Is something, uh, yeah, this is something that, uh, for instance, uh, someone from the community might want to, to contribute because I, I think... Uh, they can go to the GitHub repository, learn how the serial plotter is, is coded, and propose their, their UI for it. One more question. Does it work on Apple M1? Beautifully. I have a, I have a new uh, M1 Max that I got a few weeks ago, and it works amazingly well. It works uh, in the Rosetta 2 translation layer, but trust me, it's much faster than the i9 I had before. But today you're not a good testimonial regarding your your. Computer. No, this is the Mac Pro. This is not my M1. It's uh, it's oh, another okay. Mac. <laughs> All right. One more question. Um, uh, 
someone is asking whether there will be a Linux version for ARM64. Okay, I can tell you that I have built uh, this IDE on a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, any worth, but not every uh, platform's tool is available for ARM64. So it depends on the on the platform uh, uh, distributor. All our tools that we develop inside Arduino, we release ARM64 versions. But for instance, some other uh, platforms such as STM32 don't necessarily release the tools for ARM64. Okay, so if you're interested in this, uh, you can go to GitHub uh, and uh, I suggest to open a discussion there and uh, so that uh, we can work together in testing what works and what not. And we understand if it, uh, if we are ready to make an automated uh, official release for ARM64 uh, as well. This is exactly the kind of help we, we need from, from the community. Uh, one more question. What kind of bandwidth does the serial plotter have? I think this is more for Francesco. Yeah, actually, um, there is no hard limit on the bandwidth of the serial plotter. Um, we uh, spent a lot of time to uh, to remove any cap from uh, from the plotting application itself. So basically, we aggregate every message coming from the board, and we plot fast enough so that you have uh, you should always have 30 FPS um, in order to to look it uh, smoothly. So yeah, there is no bandwidth. It's actually the bandwidth for, from your board. So basically, if I recall correctly, as a bonus, we also got the, the, a new feature on the command line because we are now able to, to, to see the serial output from, from, the, from the command line tool. Is it right? In the CLI, do we have this? Yes, uh, yes. The, the, C, the CLI now has a monitor command, yes. Uh, now, uh, oh, one more question. Has it got a print option in the menu now? Uh, well, uh, no, <laughs> no, that's, that's a hard answer. Uh, I, I know that some users want to print their code, uh, but nowadays, you know, like with there, there aren't many people with printers in the world. And we haven't really concentrated on this. Uh, it's in our backlog, but if enough people ask for it, there might end up being a print. Yeah, so option. please jump in GitHub and provide your use case because we were interested in understanding why would you want to, to print, print from your ID. But then if you need it, of course, you really need to implement it. Look, uh, I remember when I was uh, when I was younger, I loved to print code and debugging with a with a colored pens, but I haven't done that, that in a long time. And actually now it has a debugger. Uh, there is one more question. I'm not sure I understand it. Uh, can you create a log file recording CLI? Uh, can you create a log file recording CLI? Maybe. maybe can... Yeah, if you can maybe explain uh, what you mean better. Maybe you, you mean if we can have a log file with the, with, with the full trace uh, of the of what the CLI is doing in background. Maybe that, that's what you mean. So in this case, what was the answer? Uh, I don't know. What, honestly, when I had to record the CLI, uh, what I've done, I've used uh, ASCII Cinema. And basically, I was just running the CLI and recording the output. So. Oh, now there is a very interesting question for anyone coding a lot of time. Is there an autofill function or error correction? So someone who basically does Arduino for you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, actually, it, there is autofill. I've, uh, I've showed in the demo that there is autocomplete. And uh, when you select a method, it will basically complete the method and highlight each of the parameters of the signature. So you can just fill one tab and uh, and move forward. So for me, that's uh, that's enough auto completion. I don't know if there there are any harder requirements, but oh, yeah, then, there is uh, there is. No, no, yeah. Uh, I noticed that someone asked uh, something more about the debugger whether it supports step by step debugging. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, all essentially. 
depending on the support of the platform. So let's say that you are using an Arduino Nano 33 IoT, that's a SAMD21. We develop it, we enable the debugging. Uh, you can use uh, Atmel EDBG or a JLink. And when you stop uh, on a breakpoint, then you can even jump into parts of the framework. So you can see all the headers, you can really go deeper. Uh, but for instance, when it comes to platforms such as Embed, we do not, uh, we only release the headers, so you can't really jump into everything. Uh, and that's because the, the, the Embed framework is gigantic and it would be gigabytes on the, on the user's computer. But you can definitely step into, step out, step over. Everything that you would do debugging works. And, uh, you know, looking at registers as well. So... Uh, yeah, um, so please help us test this. Um, I forgot to mention one thing. If you go to the to the to the docs website, uh, you will find uh, many tutorials already for this new ID. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to to, sh to share it to, to to show you. If you go to docs.arduino.cc and click on ID 2.0, you will find several tutorials, including tutorials about debugging. So if you follow these steps, uh, you will be able. Uh, to uh, try the, the new debugging features and to learn how to do step-by-step -step debugging. You see the breakpoints, uh, you learn how to change a variable while the sketch is running and so on. So please test it and help us understand if it works uh, for you on your boards uh, and whether it is uh, uh, how you would, uh, you would need it to be. Uh, now there is one more question about an interesting topic. Uh, uh, um, this user is saying that sometimes they are forced to use multiple versions of the same library uh, because they need to sometimes refresh some older Arduinos, older projects uh, with older versions of the library. Is this uh, something uh, uh, we can do to help uh, this person to organize their workflow? Uh, all right. Uh, the, the short answer is not yet. The longer answer is that months ago, uh, I myself worked on a proposal, so an RFC, request for comment, on our GitHub. We have a GitHub for our, all our RFC documents. And it was basically uh, addressing this issue. So how can I guarantee that five years from now, my project can be rebuilt exactly with the same versions of the libraries, of the platforms and everything? Uh, in the upcoming months, we will be focusing more on this uh, particular subject because we want to make sure that the users can sort of uh, freeze a configuration that will always build uh, that will always build their sketch as it was last built uh, the last time it worked. And this requires some rework of the platform, still managing not to break anything prior because the, the beauty of the work that we do and actually the pain sometimes is that we have to make sure that every new feature that we introduce does not break anything below Arduino ID 1.5, which is when the big changes happen. So you will be able to do this first in the CLI and then after it works really well in the CLI, we are going to bring it to the IDE with a easy to use user experience and, and a simple way to select which exact version of the build you can, uh, you can compile. So it is coming. It's a lot of work. So we are getting close to the end. So let's take the, the few final questions. Uh, this is very advanced. Uh, is there any integration with Xcode? Uh, well, you can write your own integration for Xcode because the CLI is basically what's behind the, the curtain. Uh, and if you take Microsoft uh, has built a plugin for uh, uh, VS Code, they use the CLI. So you can do the same. You can just write your own scripts to use the CLI and uh, get JSON data out of it and see what comes back and build and upload. I use it from the command line all the time. I really like the command line. So, so let's take the last question, and this is probably the the one uh, that was asked uh, uh, the, the most uh, in our chat. Uh, it's a big question: Is there a dark theme? Okay, there is a dark theme which came with Thea, 
uh, we kind of, you know, kind of banked on it and uh, we kept using it. Many users use it, uh, but our team has designed an exquisite Arduino uh, proper dark team, which we are going to introduce before the final release. So it's beautiful and it's, uh, it's something that really fits the aesthetics of this ID. I think this is good news and the best way to, to close this webinar. Please uh, jump into the discussion, try the, the Arduino IDE 2.0, uh, provide all the feedback you can, positive feedback, negative feedback. Let's collaborate to make this ID perfect. Uh, so thank you, all, all of you, to, for, for staying with us. Thank you, Ubi. Thank you, Francesco. And also thanks to our colleagues, uh, Lucrezia and Spanner, who helped us run this show. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ciao.